Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial is going to show you how to rig a new model with animations and a skeleton from a pre-existing Empire at War model. For example, in this case, we have a. We're gonna try to show. I'm gonna show you how to rig a Rebel Trooper model using the vanilla Stormtrooper skeleton and animations. First things first. After you import the mo the model for. <clears throat> that you want to use as a base rig and skeleton we can import the model that you want rigged and as I mentioned it's gonna be a rebel trooper in this case the first thing you have to do is match up the rebel trooper model with the stormtrooper model and to do that we can click both then put them since this is he's on the left of the stormtrooper model we can center him to x0 now so as we can see, the Rebel Trooper model is smaller than the Vanilla Stormtrooper model. So what do we do? We go into Wireframe and we can resize it so to make it so that the Rebel Trooper model will be the size as the same size as the Vanilla Stormtrooper model and skeleton. So that way it will be can be rigged more properly. So we can scale it, and if it's see if it's scaled, we can move it up to big. Decrease a bit size, move it a bit, and, and this looks promising. So we're gonna leave it like this. So what we're gonna do now is go back into smooth, and as we already matched up the rebel model with the stormtrooper model, we can we can delete the stormtrooper mesh, but do not delete the bonds as you need the bonds in order to properly rig it. So now that we got this, we can see that the bonds are look pretty well aligned, but the rebel looks grey. And you know, if you're gonna rig, try to rig it, we can gonna want to make the model look easier to see which part is which. So what we're gonna do is apply the texture to the rebel model now. So in this case, the rebel model has a separate head and a separate body model, so each one will that need to have the texture applied separately. So for since this is an infantry model, we can I, which has animations, we can have to use our skin gloss. And if we do not want the model to be too glossy, we can have to go to the specular part of the shader and set the value to zero so that it looks properly and doesn't look too glossy and ugly. Now it's time to apply the texture. There's his head, and there's his uniform. The weapon we can add later, and to make it easier, body, rebel head. It's now it's time to the fun part: applying the skin rig so that we can add the bones to the rebel trooper and make it give him the animations without making new ones. So what we do now is we click on the main body model. Now that we have this clicked, we can want to add a skin shader. So we go to the, the modify tab and under the modifier tab, we go to the modifier list and scroll down until we find the skin modifier. But before we do anything, we have to go to the advanced parameters. The reason for this is we have to set born effect limit to 1. The reason for this is due to how the Alamo engine works. In order to for the models to work properly, each vertex can only have be affected by one bone. So thus we will set the bone effect limit to 1. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the rebel trooper's head. Let's go to the skin modifier and select it. Now that we do this, it's time for the fun part. Since this is just the head, we're gonna add the head bone. And now, with that part, we're gonna go to the main Rebel Trooper body model and click Edit Envelope, go to the where it says Bones, add, and add the bones. We're gonna add most of the bones minus the backpack bone, which is used only if a trooper carries a backpack or something else on his back, 
and we're not going to include the B-Gun component. Why? Because that's only for his weapon and blaster. So without those, we're going to add the bicep bones, the calf bones, the chest bones, the f arm bones, the foot bones, the hand bones, the head, head bone we want to add for in this case. But we'll add the pelvis bone, the thigh bones, and click select. And once you can do, do this, you can see it looks nasty. But this is actually easily fixable. What you're going to have to do is go to the added envelopes. And depending if you want to use, you could use uh, vertices. For example, select this and go into the weight table to assign the vertices to the proper bone. Or you could use a paint weight and select the bone you want to paint with. What the paint fade would do is that you could paint which bone you want affected by that specific, which vertice you want to be affected by that specific bone. And in this case, if you go into wireframe mode, if you select a bone, it will show you which part, which bone affects which area. As so, what we're gonna do for for now. Let's try to fix this part. So to fix this part, we can go into and select the chest bone. And since after we select the chest bone, we're going to paint weight. But before anything, we have to uncheck paint blend weights, as that will affect how it works. As you can see, well, the vertices of the model are starting to go back to normal. But it's, uh, this using the paint weight it's gonna be tedious. So what else can we do? Let's go to and let's use the weight table. In this case, after we take the vert select the vertices we want, let's go to click select the vertices and go to select all. Now we're gonna look for which bone we want affected by this part. Since this is part of his chest, we're gonna go look for the chest bone in the skin of eight table. And once we find this, click control, right click, and bam. That part of his mesh looks normal. Let's do this again. Done. And again. You do this for, it doesn't matter which part of the mesh that is <coughs> is distorted. If you find the, if you know what bone is supposed to belong to, you could use the fate table. See, not that big of a deal. And let's, let's fix this leg. And since we see this part is from his upper thigh, and it's the left bone tie. Let's go to paint fades and fix this part of the leg. So it doesn't look like it's this ugly. This part is, it's not that hard. It's more like that it takes a while to complete. And as you can see, let's try to fix this right tie. It's just, at this point, it's, it's just a case of trying to fix, uh, trying to fix which bone affects which vertice. You could do that, just like a puzzle. It's not too hard. <clears throat> and as you see, if anything, it's just a bit, it just takes a while, but it's not too hard. Anyways. I hope you enjoyed this simple tutorial and will find the tips that I told you a bit useful in your own modding endeavors. Thank you, have a good day, goodbye.